Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. And as usual, before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to bless our time of study together. Heavenly Father, it's a marvel to us sometimes to think about this Creator God desires that we would know You. You want us to know Your Son, Jesus. You want us to know Your ways. And Lord, not only do You want us to know Him, but You promised to give Your Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth and then also to empower us to live according to those ways. So we open our hearts and our minds, our eyes and our ears to receive from you today so that we might be able to live in a manner that is pleasing unto you. And we'll give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Do Not Frustrate the Grace of God. And it's taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 2, and verse 21. Paul has told the church members in Galatia that he is crucified with Christ, and yet he lives. The life which Paul now lives is by the faith of Jesus Christ, who loved him and gave himself for him. We enjoy the same benefits when we believe that Jesus Christ came into the world to pay the price for our sins by his death on the cross and resurrection from the grave. Jesus' substitutionary sacrifice is appropriated unto us, and it is only by his grace that it is offered. Paul continues his word to the Galatians in chapter 2 and verse 21 by giving one final reason as proof that Jesus Christ came to save all who will believe. He wrote, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Because of the great offering of grace from God to man, Paul wrote first, I do not frustrate the grace of God, which means he doesn't do away with, set aside, or disregard the grace of God. Paul will not nullify, void, reject, refuse, or slight God's grace. Grace is a gift from Almighty God, and there is no way that Paul was going to do anything that would keep himself from receiving it. It is by grace that we are saved. It is by grace that we have a relationship with God at all. To do away with that access would only would not only keep us from fellowship with God, but would also be foolish as well. Paul reasons once again, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If there was any way to keep the law of God, there would be no reason for Jesus to die. If it wasn't for our failure to abide perfectly by every aspect of the law, there would have been no reason for Jesus to come. Christ would have come and died in vain and undeservedly. There would have been no purpose for Jesus' death if there was any other way for us to be righteous. There was and is no other way to be righteous before God. And because Jesus came died and rose again from the grave, we now can be righteous by believing in him and his finished work. When we attempt in our feeble ways to somehow show God that we are righteous before him, we really have no other work to show other than the work of his son Jesus. Because of Jesus and the sacrifice he made, we now have fellowship with God. God himself was the originator of us. He knew that we would turn from him and not keep his law. And he sent and substituted his son, Jesus, to pay the price for our disobedience as he extended his grace, his unmerited favor, to all who will receive him. Let all who read or hear these words today appreciate and thank the Lord Jesus for all the wonderful works he has done for mankind. Next time, we will begin the third chapter of the book of Galatians and find Paul addressing the Galatians directly again. So read ahead and let us join together then. And may the Lord bless you, keep you, and he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word. In Jesus' name.